and welcome back to yet another awesome video here on Lick and Riff in which I would like to answer your questions regarding what music do I like, what music do I recommend, what music do I enjoy. Um, so I'm gonna share my 10 favorite guitar albums with you, but I'm also gonna share some other music, if you allow me to. So... My eclectic taste might surprise you. It might surprise you. My, my choices for this list might not be what you'd expect. But having said that, I will start with the three instrumental albums that I do like, that I do listen to, that I think that are just far, far above any other guitar instrumental album that I have ever come across. And those three albums are Introspection by Greg Howe, A Go-Go by John Schofield, and Spaces Revisited by Larry Coryell. And let me tell you exactly why these three albums are just so magnificent, in my opinion. Um, those three names, okay, Greg Howe, John Schofield, Larry Coryell, they, they're sophisticated players. They're very advanced musicians. But these albums are so approachable, they're so down to earth, and yet they maintain that amazingly ingenious quality that just blows your mind from the very first note of the album to the very last. It holds your attention completely. There's no boring moment in any of those albums. And in my opinion, um, that doesn't happen very often with instrumental guitar music. And this is why these albums, other than the beauty of the music, those albums are achievements. They're masterpieces. Because most guitar music has a very, very big disadvantage in the fact that uh, guitar music tends to repeat itself and become predictable the more you listen to it, especially if it's the same player. But this doesn't happen uh, with these three albums. Those are my three recommendations for um, instrumental guitar albums. Okay? Now, let's talk about um, distorted rock. So when it comes to distorted rock, okay, before I, before I completely throw you off with some of my more esoteric recommendations. Um, I particularly enjoy one album by Ozzy Osbourne and one album by Bad Religion. But it's probably not gonna be the albums that most people would suspect. Because the Ozzy Osbourne album that I fell in love with is an album that his fans don't like so much. I can understand why, but it's but I think it's their loss, Osmosis. Um, Osmosis is, in my opinion, a work of beauty. It's a work of beauty. It's, it's, it's another side of Ozzy Osbourne. And the guitar work by Zach Wilde on that album um, is breathtaking. It's breathtaking. It's, it's also another side of Zach Wilde. And um, Ozzy Osbourne fans are correct when they say that this album isn't as heavy and doesn't have that many um, that many strong guitar riffs, but so what? So what? It's still a beautiful album. It's still a it's still a magnificent piece of music. It's it's uh, it's Ozzy Osbourne expressing his more sensitive side, and it enables Zach Wilde to express his more sensitive side as well. And that doesn't mean that it's less heavy. 
Okay, the the title uh, the of the the not the title um, the first track of the album Perry Mason is a heavy song. It's a heavy heavy metal song, and the the guitar work there is just as heavy as anything else Zach Wild plays. Um, but the rest of the album is a bit softer. And I think that's okay. I think that's okay. I love Ozzy Osbourne. But for some reason, this album stands out to me because it's different. Um, so it's... it's And surpri- not surprisingly, I think, because again, I like to find unique works uh, that take me by surprise. So unsurprisingly, my next recommendation uh, is... Also, not a fan favorite among Bad Religion's fans. Um, But for a reason that I personally find completely illegitimate. I love the album The Grey Race by Bad Religion. Um, The Grey Race is a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. It's just as much as a a masterpiece as introspection and a go-go and spaces revisited because this album is so good it's so good the guitar riffs are perfect the guitar solos are succinct they're they're so on point they're perfect it's they're they're um small bites of perfection every single time the the songs uh true to bad religion form are are short and to the point the 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 lyrics are amazing the the uh, greg graffing singing is spot on and he he takes you along with him uh for a journey of rage and the background vocals and everything that's going on and the the um, the the wall of sound is just spectacular now the compositional value of the songs um is also high uh, this is this song contains some of the best songs I've ever heard. It contains some of my favorite songs, including the uh, fifth song on the album, punk rock song, and the last song on the album, Cease, uh, which, in my opinion, is a Bob Dylan level song. It's that good. Now, um, the there there are many things that I can say about this album, but I'll just you know. I'll just let you listen to it. The reason that most Bad Religion fans don't like The Grey Race is because the um, the band's uh, leader, let's call it, uh, he left the band um, for that album and I think the album afterwards, No Substance. And then he came back. So... F- Bad Religion fans decided that those two albums are not part of Bad Religion canon. This album is different. It's different than most Bad Religion albums. And that's a good thing, in my opinion, not a bad thing. So, The Grey Race by uh, Bad Religion. Now, um, another side recommendation. If you enjoy uh, Osmosis and Zach Wilde's work, Zach Wilde released a, an acoustic album back in the 90s. It's called Book of Shadows. In the 90s or the late 80s. Uh, it's called Book of Shadows. Now, um, for a while, that was the only album that I heard. I heard it on loop. Um, because it's, it's something completely unexpected from Zach Wilde. It's such a sweet album. It's such a, an emotional album. And it's an acoustic album, and Zach Wilde can rip it on acoustic as much as he does on electric. And it's not necessarily speed, mind you. It's sound-wise, it's composition-wise. It's a very, very good album. Uh, now, a couple of years ago, Zach Wilde finally released uh, an album that most people uh, were waiting for, which is Book of Shadows 2. I didn't like that album at all, uh, because it didn't contain any of the authenticity that the original album had, Book of Shadows. Now, it was a critical success, but I just found the songs on the album to just sound the same throughout. It's it's a double album too. It's it's two CDs, and 
all the songs just sound absolutely the same to me. It has nothing of the originality and the honesty and the authenticity of the original Book of Shadows album. My opinion. Uh, so I, I also recommend Zach Wilde's Book of Shadows if you like Zach Wilde's work on Osmosis. Um, now, some of you might ask yourselves, wait, you're recommending Bad Religion, but you're not talking about any of the big bands, any of the huge Don't You Like Anything by Metallica or Megadeth uh, and, the, and the likes. Uh, and I do, of course I do, but uh, I like pretty much everything, so I don't, I can't recommend just one album. So um, if you want to know which Metallica and Megadeth songs I like, uh, then I'm gonna have to go by Holy Wars by Megadeth. Holy Wars uh, is my favorite Megadeth song, and one is my favorite Metallica song. One. Um, so... Another uh, guitar player that um, that I think is very unique is Steve Morse. Steve Morse. But I don't really relate to Steve Morse's instrumental music that much. But I love Steve Morse's uh, work with Deep Purple. And in uh, 1996, I think, they released an album called Perpendicular. And Steve Morse's work on that album is spectacular. It's fantastic. It's a fantastic guitar album. It's also a fantastic Deep Purple album. Now we get to the surprising part of the list. I love Bob Dylan as a guitar player, especially on Good As I Been To You. Good As I Been To You is an acoustic album by Bob Dylan, uh, where he recorded um, folk songs. But he did it alone with, with his acoustic guitar in open tunings. Bob Dylan playing open tunings. It's Bob Dylan playing guitar like you've never heard him play guitar before. It's going to completely change the way that you think about Bob Dylan as a guitar player. Um, it's just beautiful guitar work. Completely unexpected. And... Um, I love Bob Dylan as a guitar player, also on the 1997 album Time Out of Mind. And the production value on that album, the, the, the sound of the guitars on that album is unique, it's beautiful, it's haunting. It's, uh, Time Out of Mind is a highly personal album by Bob Dylan. Uh, it's about his thoughts about growing old and about his career and, and just his, you know, becoming an old man and his thoughts about life. And the guitar work on that album is so good. It's so, so good. Um, there's no fancy soloing or whatnot, but some of the best rhythm guitar work, some of the best um, approach to simple yet beautiful guitar work ever and that's my recommendation good as i've been to you and if you like bob dylan and you haven't heard time out of mind give it a listen and if we're talking about production and the way that guitars can completely change an album even if it's not a guitar album per se are you ready for this I stand fully behind what I'm going to recommend right now. Nora Jones, Come Away With Me. Nora Jones' debut album contains some of the best acoustic guitar work that you'll ever hear. Not to mention that the songs are very good. The singing is spectacular. The piano playing is beautiful. But the guitar work... Come Away With Me by Nora Jones, and I feel no qualms about saying this, is a guitar album. It's a guitar album from start to finish. Except for the final piece where she's, you know, playing piano and singing by herself. But the whole uh, album is a guitar album. 
listen to the album from start to finish and tell me that I'm wrong. Okay? It even starts with the guitar. Even before the piano. Okay? Nora Jones, she's the pianist. And even before the piano kicks into full gear, the guitar opens the album. It's a guitar album, and it's one of the best guitar albums out there. Now we get to the band, the band from the 70s. Um, Robbie Robertson not only wrote most of the material, but he was also a beast of a guitar composer and a beast of a composer as well. Now, the band throughout their whole career, they produced, uh, they produced some of the most beautiful and groundbreaking songs uh, in that era. But one album, in my opinion, stands out. Stage Fright. Stage Fright by the band is a masterpiece. Again, there's no dull moment, there is no bad song. The whole album, the entire album, from start to finish, is a masterpiece. From any perspective you want to think about it. Um, on any perimeter, that album is a masterpiece. Now, um, the guitar work on that album is also very, very unique. It's highly unique. It's, it's, um, it's, it's all Robbie Robertson's vision. It's his vision, his guitar vision. And I think that that's the best Robbie Robertson personification um, that they've produced. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the words that I can say to describe it, but just listen to it. It's a beautiful album. It's just a beautiful album. And my final recommendation is Dire Straits, Love Over Gold. Love Over Gold um, is probably my favorite Dire Straits album because it contains Mark Knopfler's um, biggest achievements guitar-wise other than Sultans of Swing, in my opinion. Um, we're talking about Private Investigations, which uh, is unique for Mark Knopfler. Mark Knopfler had never played anything like that before, and he never played anything like that since. And Telegraph Road. Telegraph Road is a masterful song with a masterful solo that tells you a masterful story. And even though I, the reason that I started playing guitar was thanks to Money for Nothing. Money for Nothing is the song that got me into playing guitar and got me into wanting to play guitar. And Brothers in Arms is an album that I heard hundreds of times. Um, Love Over Gold is my favorite Dire Straits album. And I don't think that uh, I need to explain why you need, as a guitar player, why you should listen to Dire Straits, right? So I've been talking. Uh, I've been talking for a long, long time, and I got you um, a ton of recommendations. But um, I promised you a couple of albums that aren't necessarily guitar related. So I'm just gonna leave you with a couple, okay? Because there's so much material, and I also gave you side recommendations. Um, so I think I, I recommended about 15 albums by now. But the Two albums that I, I um, that I really enjoy, other than uh, you know, other than what I told you so far, are Cannonball Adderley's Quintet Live in San Francisco. Okay, Cannonball Adderley Quintet Live in San Francisco, especially the first track, and Whisper Not by the Keith Jarrett Trio. Whisper Not by the Keith Jarrett Trio. Um, you'll understand why when you listen to it. Uh, it's just, um, you know, just a perfect, just a perfect piece of music. And if you like those albums, then you 
want to uh, continue to Keith Jarrett Trio's uh, Tokyo 96. So, Whisper Not and Tokyo 1996. I wanted to talk about more albums, but that's more than enough, I think. Okay? So, I'll see you the next lesson. Enjoy! Happy listening. Bye for now.